Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the eTrailer Class 3 trailer hitch receiver on a 2021 Chevrolet Equinox. Now this is what our trailer hitch is going to look like when it's installed on the Equinox and the great thing is it's a hidden cross tube and what that means is many times going down the road you're going to see that center section of the hitch hanging down. That's not the case here, it actually lives behind the fascia so the only thing hanging down is going to be the receiver end and the business end of the hitch. Now being a class three means that you are gonna get some decent amount of capacities as far as towing and tongue weight. And this one's gonna come in at 4,500 pounds for our gross trailer weight rating. And that's just gonna be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded up. You also have a tongue weight rating, which is gonna be the downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube opening. It's gonna be for your suspended accessories. That's coming in at 675. So overall, some pretty good numbers. Now it can be used with weight distribution the numbers are going to stay exactly the same. And before hooking up and just towing, you're going to want to check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's actually rated at. And that way you can compare that with the hitch, take the lower of those two, and that way you stay safe. Now this is a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, which is definitely the most common size for your accessories. So having this is really gonna open up the options to what you can use it for, whether it be a ball mount, a bike rack, cargo carrier, any different accessories, this is gonna be a great option to find lots of them. Now you're also gonna have a 5 8 hitch pin hole here. Now the pin and clip does not come with the hitch, but a lot of times your accessories will come when come with one. Now, if you want a locking one, there's plenty of options available here at eTrailer, and that's kind of a good peace of mind when you have your accessories loaded up. You can lock that in place and know that they're not gonna disappear in the hands of someone else. Now, if you do plan on towing, you do have a rolled style safety chain loop here. So it's gonna be great for your normal size hooks or even a larger clevis style is gonna go on there no problem. A few important measurements here. We're gonna measure from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia. We're coming at about five and a half inches. And that's gonna be important to note for some of your folding accessories like your cargo carriers or bike racks. When they're in that stowed position, they can kind of get close to the rear fascia. So something to keep in mind when choosing those accessories. Now we're also gonna get our ground clearance. So from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground, we're coming in at 11 inches. And I don't ever really worry about the trailer hitch making contact with the ground, but as you have suspended accessories, that is gonna kind of tilt those down closer to the ground or if you're on rough or rocky terrain. So something to keep in mind when not only choosing your accessories, but also while you're driving with them attached. Now, as far as installation goes, this is fairly easy to do. Now, you are gonna be dropping down your muffler and that's gonna gain you access to be able to get that hidden cross tube up and into where it bolts up. And to get our hardware in place, we are gonna have to enlarge an access hole to get our hardware passed through there. It's a very small amount, so make sure that you have a cutting device available, whether it be a file, a Dremel, or just something to kind of notch out a little bit of metal to be able to pass those up. But overall, it's pretty easy. You could do it in your garage and driveway in about 15 to 30 minutes. It might be beneficial to have an extra set of hands to kind of get the hitch up in place. But I'm gonna walk you through all the steps so you can get your hitch installed. So let's take a look at that now. Now to begin our installation, we're gonna to wanna to grab a T15 Torx bit, and there's gonna be two screws right here on the rear fascia, so we're gonna go ahead and get those removed. Now during the whole process of the installation, I highly recommend having a nice organized spot for all of your hardware, and that way it just goes back together easily because you have all the same hardware that came off. In order for our hitch to go up in place, we're gonna to need to lower the muffler down and part of the exhaust as it goes up. But before we do that, we're gonna to wanna to support it. So if you're doing this in your garage or on your driveway, using a block of wood or something to make sure that the exhaust isn't just free hanging, that's gonna benefit it. Uh, just that way downstream, it's not bending and causing any damage. So since I'm suspended here, I'm gonna go ahead and use a cam buckle strap and just find two points. I can use these suspension arms here and just kind of put this across and then we'll cinch it up and that's just going to cradle it. Um, we are going to be removing this isolator as well so it is going to drop down quite a bit if it's not suspended. So on each side you're going to see two 15 millimeter nuts that go into this bracket here and there's going to be two 15 millimeter bolts on each side and they're going to be right up here so we're going to want to go ahead and get those removed. And once those are taken out, there's, this bracket actually kind of slips in. It's got a little tab that's holding it here. So you may need to just kind of slide this out. You can see where it kind of locks in place there. That's important to note for when we put this back up. 
But uh, with this side off, I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. Now we'll need to remove this isolator here that's on the rear cross member. Um, it can get a little tricky sometimes, especially uh, just over time that rubber kind of expands and contracts and gets pretty tight on here. So to help it along, you can use just a silicone spray. Uh, even soap water solution will work pretty well just to kind of help it glide along. Now it doesn't matter if you take it off from the top or the bottom, um, but we're gonna go ahead and use a pry bar here and we'll just get this isolator pried off. Now our hitch is going to mount up by passing these carriage bolts through the frame and there's this access hole and that's how we're going to accomplish it using some fish wires but before we do that you can see the bolts are slightly too large for this access hole so we're going to need to enlarge this and it's really not too much to enlarge and really if you just kind of knock out two notches here it's going to be wide enough for this to slide in so keep this handy and I recommend using a Dremel tool and I just run the wheel across here and that should notch it out enough and having that bolt handy I can just test fit to make sure I can get this head portion in. So we'll go ahead and get this notched out. Now obviously make sure that you're wearing safety glasses while doing this. Some other methods you could probably use a burr bit to kind of knock out those notches as well or even a drill bit you can kind of work your way here but either way you are going to need to enlarge these. So just running that wheel across the diameter of that makes it able to be able to slot in there. So that's kind of what we're looking for. Now we have this one notched out. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on the other side. And before we put our hardware or our hitch in place, I'm also gonna just put a little bit of spray paint here on that raw metal. That way it doesn't corrode long term. And you can use a clear spray paint. Now, I'm just using black. The hitch is gonna sit up here, so really you'll never see this, but we also wanna just make sure that uh, as moisture kinda gets in here that it's not gonna corrode and become rust. So this is just a little added layer of protection. Now with that access hole enlarged, we're gonna be able to fish wire our carriage bolts and spacer blocks in place. And if you've never done this before, it's not that overwhelming. I'm gonna show you how to do it here, and it's gonna be the same process for all of them. So the three spots that we're going to be putting these down to create those studs to mount the hitch up are going to be located here, here, and here. So we'll start on this furthest one. That way we can get this one in place and making it easier to pass it over this one. So we're going to take our coiled end here and feed it up through the hole. And then I'm going to just put a bend on it. That way it's going to kind of get our cable to start moving towards the access hole and just kind of push this through. Sometimes it can kind of get caught up, so just kind of uh, give it a shimmy here and there if you need to. And then we're gonna reach up into our access hole and try to pull that coil through there. And sometimes it can be hard to kind of pull that through. So if you need to, you can use a pair of needle nose or uh, something along those lines to be able to pull that. There's our coil there. We've got to hold on it and then pull through. So now at this point, we're going to take our spacer block and this is what the carriage bolt's going to bolt into and that way we can thread the nut on there. So we can feed this in first and uh, you can just push this up and slide that in the frame. It can sit right there as well. And then this portion, you're just going to thread on the carriage bolt. Now you don't want to pull the wire down too much. You want to make sure that it doesn't pull through. And if you need to, you can put a little bend there to kind of keep that in place. But this isn't too far of a distance, so it shouldn't be too bad. And then we'll just go ahead and grab this portion of the wire and that spacer block might cause the carriage bolt to kind of be a little crooked here. So if you're having trouble getting it in this way, you can also kind of do a, a slight variation where you kind of put it in backwards and I'll show you that now. So you can see it's kind of tight here, but if you pass it in like this, as long as it gets in the frame rail, doesn't really matter. And then from here, kind of just jiggle this around until we get this passed in. Now you're gonna to wanna to keep the fish wires on. It's gonna make it a lot easier when you put the hitch in uh, to not push these back up in the frame rail. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same exact process for the other two holes and then also the three on the other side of the vehicle. Now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna get this in place. Now with these popped out from the rear fascia, it's gonna be a lot easier to be able to kind of slide this in and one side, once you have that through, it's gonna be easier to get that other side in. And then what we're gonna do is take our fish wires and run them through the corresponding holes. So we'll just pass these through. It's gonna help kind of channel this up as we go. 
Now there's two holes here. You're gonna to wanna to use the larger slotted one. You're also gonna to wanna to have your nuts ready to go. That way we can raise this up and get one started on each side and that way it's gonna hold it up, making it a lot easier for the rest of the hardware to go on. So just raise this up and if those bolts are kind of giving you trouble passing through, you can just simply pull the wire and that way it kind of brings it down to where it's creating a nice mounting point. And then from there, your pull wire, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you kind of keep this in place. Um, you can pull that off, but as far as the stud here, you don't want that passing back up in the frame rail. So you can put a little bit of pressure by kind of leaning against the hitch. And once you get a few threads started, you should be good. Main thing is just don't push this back in the frame rail. Otherwise you're gonna to have to fish that out. So with one started on each side, we can go ahead and get the rest of the nuts hand tightened on. So now with those hand tightened in place, we're gonna go back with a three quarter inch socket and tighten them down. Now we don't have to get too crazy here. We're gonna be going back with the torque wrench to get the proper torque setting. Just make sure that they're snug and it draws the hitch up. So now at this point, we're gonna go back with a torque wrench and that same three quarter inch socket we used to tighten it down. And we're gonna just make sure that they're torqued to spec. Now, you're gonna find the torque specs in the instruction manual. And if you need a torque wrench, you can pick one up here at E-Trailer. You can generally rent them at an auto parts store. But this is gonna be an important step. It's gonna make sure that they're gonna be tight enough to not become loose over time. But also, you wanna make sure they're not too tight because that'll put stress on the threads. So go through and torque down all your hardware properly. So with those all torqued down properly, all that's left to do is get our exhaust brackets and our isolator back up and whatever you're using to support that exhaust out of the way and then we're ready to start using our hitch. And that was a look and installation of the E-Trailer Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2021 Chevrolet Equinox.